Welcome to this video tutorial. During this exercise we'll face the task of validating the transfer process of CAD data to a Revit file by means of an Excel comparison. Throughout the work of a ViewModeler there are many situations in which CAD drawings must be transposed into Revit files. This is a quick check of that transfer process focused on metadata only. Our source material is made up of two files. One DWG file that contains the original data and the Revit model that in theory should match it. Our strategy will be to produce an Excel comparison between the data from both sources. To produce such a comparison, data must be extracted from a Revit schedule and the same should be done from AutoCAD with the command data extraction. By studying the original information, several patterns can be detected, which in turn help the user clean the data. It can be seen that information of each piece of equipment is explained in several texts that relate to them. The only text that is of interest is the panel's name. This is the parameter that we are going to validate in this exercise. With this in mind, the texts in green can be disregarded, given that they refer only to location, except for a few ACOM cases. In fact, in these instances, the name of the panel is indicated in green. We can also see that texts in brackets are not of interest either, because they refer to the discipline. Moreover, every panel's name is preceded by a prefix that says cuadro. Based on this analysis, we are going to cook the data after exporting it. So let's execute the command data extraction, create a new data extraction called metadata check. Select the objects that I want to consider and only keep the texts. From the texts, I'm only going to focus on those attributes of interest, value and color. I don't want to combine identical rows, given that I want every row to represent one piece of equipment. We can obviate the count column and the name, given that they are all texts. So I'm going to export this and call it data of origin. I'm going to do the equivalent with Revit, that is to say, export the schedule and call it data of end using the tabulator to separate the columns. Following this I'm going to read both files in Excel. Finally, I have data of origin and data of M. I'm going to cook them a bit to be able to compare them. Now let's apply the criteria that we found when studying the data. So I'm going to filter them all. Ctrl A to select them all, Ctrl Shift L to filter it. Next, sort them alphabetically 
to make sure that both sources follow the same criteria in order that they can be compared. We can arrange them alphabetically based on column B. From the analysis I made previously, I can see that from the text shown in green, I only have to take into consideration the ACOM values, given that the rest of them refer solely to location. With this in mind, let's concentrate on ACOM values. The rest of texts in green can be ignored. Using the text in white, I'm going to filter and take out the prefix quadro. And disregard the texts in brackets. So I'm going to stay with the rest. And from the ending data, we need to use all of them because Revit already identifies one column per piece of equipment. Schedule was configured as such, and I'm going to sort them alphabetically. Now it's time to compare them. It's time to tell Excel if the data of origin equals the data of end tell me true. Otherwise, tell me false. Okay, how much equipment do I have? 129 in the origin and 129 at the end. So far so good. It means that I have not missed anything when modeling. The next step is, is to extend this until row 129. I can see that there is one mistake that could be due to human error due to typing or something else. I can see that the mistake is on row 87. At row 87, I can see that it refers to the piece of equipment D3.2 in the origin data. In the ending data, row 87 refers to the equipment E3.2. Let's look it up. D3.2 refers to the equipment, which is on this corner of the drawing. It must be one of those. I can see that the first one is in fact this one, the second one is D3.1, the next one is E3.2. There's a mistake. I can correct this and check the rest of them just in case. D2.1 correct, D2.2 correct, D1.1 correct. So now that I have changed this, this now becomes D3.2. If I were to export it again, the data of end would show in here D. So now there is an exact match between information in the DWG and information in the Revit file.